Look at this, there are fruit and veg on the side of the road. Look at the sweet potato! There's onion, there's tomato, there's even watermelon. Check that out. Nice. You must always barter, just by the way. So there we go, I've done it. Pay park fees, you pay $30 per day and 15 for comp, that's for an SADC, so 45 per day. Um, total was 270 for six days. I've got to still pay the other one because I didn't have enough quacha. So, ladies and gents, I left at eight o'clock this morning. I stopped for fuel three times to make sure I have enough. And I had a really bad experience at the one fuel station. They made me wait an hour because their speed point was off, offline. And they couldn't process the payment. So they made me wait forever and ever and ever and ever. They couldn't get a supervisor to do it manually. I can't give them cash because it's too expensive for me to give them cash. Eventually they take me to another petrol station, gas station, all you Americans. And uh, I paid there, but after like a lot of hemming and hawing. Then I went into South Luang, I went through the main gate, and then I went all the way like around the other side of the river, which was wrong. And it made me very late. I had to backtrack and come all the way out past main gate, turn left onto the D104. You see the Zikomo board? It is brown, it looks like the road. It says 19 kilometers. It will take you 45 minutes to an hour. It is one of the worst roads ever. I don't know how I survived. And now we are here. There is the signboard. Ladies and gents, I have arrived here after eight hours and 400 plus kilometers. A lot of misdirection. I got lost, spent a lot of time doing things that I shouldn't have been. But now I've arrived and the campsite has been fully booked. The rooms are all fully booked. Now I must make the decision to set up the camper, which takes about an hour and then move it again the next day because I would just be basically setting it up just for the night because it's overbooked in the campsite that I'm meant to be in, there's somebody in. But they're here for one night and then we have for four nights. So now I don't know what to do in this situation because sometimes it's good to be nice and to just be, what's the right word, compassionate and to do the right thing. But also sometimes it's just too far. You know, like how, how can it, I, I don't understand how an overbooking can happen when somebody books way in advance and they get no warning. <laughs>
So currently we have a leopard up in the tree. I've been told it's a male, the dominant male in the area. The young um, son was here earlier. He's about five. The son, who's about two or three, was here this morning. He actually made the kill. And then the mother was also here. There were three leopards here in this tree this morning. Here you've got the adult male busy feeding on a baboon carcass. And the eagles, or the cats, the batelier, Eagle and the yellow bull cut have actually found the tree and are busy circling at the moment. Hello. It's okay. Hey. It's okay. Hey. Hey, it's okay. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to hurt you. Good afternoon, ladies and gents. What a crazy 24 hours it has been. Officially 24 hours ago is when everything started going like a wild. I was at that fuel station and the um, power point, the speed point didn't want to work. That's where everything started just going crazy. So 24 hours ago as of now. But this morning's leopard was really awakening and it was a gift in the sense that it really has lifted my spirit it has been a long time since i've seen a leopard i think the last time i saw a leopard was with my dad on father's day if i'm not mistaken so that wasn't that was maybe it's over a, no it's two months maybe closer to three months so seeing that leopard this morning that lagoon with the beautiful pelicans and the storks and the herons and all of that stuff was actually the highlight of the morning. The leopard was just a bonus. Spending four hours with the leopard is a very special thing. So I'm very grateful for that. Now it is time to pack up, get my stuff and go set up my camper because I really need some food. I haven't eaten again this morning. So I'm excited for some food. Easiest thing ever. Hold on, hold on. My bottle's trying to fall off the check this up. This campsite is crazy. 
crazy. It's actually in the game management area, which means it's on the boundary of the park. It's not actually the park. This is not the park. This is outside the park. And the river behind us separates us from the park. And the river is huge. But a river means nothing for an animal. So in this tree here, there are some pods and the elephants are coming through, and so are the baboons. Well, I've got my coffee. I can't wait for my first sip once my toothbrushing taste wears away. But let's go find some animals, guys. I want to do some birding. I want to capture some general animal shots. It's just so nice to be in a place with diversity. And uh, here we go, there's an elephant down there too, check the elephant! So this is kind of how it works. You've got a series of huge plains with leadwood forests and acacia trees. And then you have the rivers with massive trees, all sorts of trees. Nyala trees, leadwood trees, oh man, mahogany, there's so many different trees. And then there's a whole bunch of lagoons and it's just stunning. So ladies and gents, it's always good to make friends. And a friend or an acquaintance that I met yesterday at the leopard siding, he explained everything. He was on the road this morning and told me about some lions. I have no idea, like, the area, but I managed to take his general direction. He said, on the river, across from a camp. And I just came to the river and I kept searching and I spotted them. It wasn't the easiest spot, but I spotted them. stretching and I'm making some food now but look who showed up he's here to eat the pods the seed pods from these trees it's amazing he is so chilled so cool check Please do not try this if you do not have experience because animals are different to people. So don't think you know an animal. You know this. Like look at this guy. Ladies and gents, driving through those trees in those big open fields is literally a dream come true. I have to pinch myself to understand and comprehend what is happening right now. There was a moment in my past where I saw those images and I was like, that is so beautiful. I want to go to South Luanga. I want to see these massive trees and like leopards with their with their arms wrapped around a massive branch 
and on my first day I saw a leopard in a tree with a kill and today I've managed to find these massive open fields with these gorgeous 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 jackal berries and leadwoods and ah mahogany these are I think they're mainly jackal berries though it's just and leadwoods and acacias not thorn acacias but it's just so incredible to be here and I'm so grateful this is gorgeous Good morning, fam family, beautiful human beings from across the world. Thank you so much for joining me, sending you good vibes from here in South Luanga. My name, I am Curtius Roberts, and I am a filmmaker, I am an entrepreneur, and I'm a storyteller. That is, I'm just a big child trying to tell beautiful stories and live my best life because I think experiences, or as my business is called, the experience, the experience, that's life. Last night was truly an experience. I was on my way from my camp to the bathroom in my underpants, and I had my torch. I actually forgot my torch, went back and fetched it, went back to the bathroom, shone down the road, boom. Straight away I picked up, there was a leopard walking in the road, and I was like, what? I spent the next hour and a half driving just around the camp, which was actually quite good because my battery goes very low during the night because of my fridge. So I spent that hour and a half driving around while this leopard was stalking Impala. It was incredible. What was even more incredible is that this leopard had no tail. Well, the tip of his tail, the little like snail white tip, was actually bitten off or cut off or I don't know. It's crazy. It was amazing. This morning I awoke to uh, to uh, light footsteps and some crunching of seed pods and some occasional and and I knew it was an elephant. It's amazing how silent but how noisy such a big animal is. Decided to come back to the Encephal Game Reserve this morning. It is a far drive but I decided to do it. I actually was going down a route, turned around and came back this way. And to, to this afternoon, I probably won't come here. I'm going to do a loop around the camp. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to try to wake up really early and come this side. Because this is my last day today. But I want to show you this. I'm about to experience one of the most amazing things ever. This is insane. Have a look here. Went into Sefu, came back out, saw some of my friends, and now the buffalo are here on the main road crossing. Wow! Guys, they're so curious.
here at Ensefu and it's been a fascinating experience to say the very least. Having found out in the past couple of days that I've been driving around on the border of a game management and hunting concession has left a couple of concerns on my mind. I actually feel, feel very unsafe. I feel lied to. It's kind of like a polar opposite when I've got the beautiful Zam Zambian sun setting there in the distance. I've got your land seagull, your carmine bee eater, <laughs> hippos and crocodiles a plenty. It is quite honestly one of the most abundant and rich wildlife environments I've ever been to. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. What a spectacular place. I'll definitely be back. I just won't be staying where I'm staying now. And I will not be investing in the people that I've been with over the last couple of days. This is why I do these trips, is to find good people, to find good places, to find animals, and to learn what's the best relationship and the best synergy to make this happen where both the animals and the people are respected. Bye son. We have arrived at Track and Trail. What? I think it's a juvenile stalk. My word, that's crazy. It looks like a shoe ball. It's like all grey. Alright, so this morning I went for a drive and uh, I went south of the camp and I discovered that this is actually a hunting concession. So once again, I was driving in a hunting concession, which is super alarming. My soul. I am just so shocked that I was not given any sort of warning, any sort of a communication. There was no communication as to how much hunting there is around the camp. The fact that Zikomo doesn't allow you to drive over the river is just, it's so negligent. My word. I actually, I must tell you this, I left without paying. I left without saying it. I went there and I just shook the guy's hands that helped me and I left because for me it's um, so much damage was done to my stuff and I just felt like at that point it was beyond it was beyond any sort of logic um, my life was at risk I just left, got out of there. I've never, ever, 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 ever felt so disrespected, so mis mistreated, and so unfairly dealt with because that road was given to Zikomo because of the fact that they felt unsafe going through the hunting concession. So they felt unsafe going through the hunting concession, yet they make me go through the hunting concession. Crazy, like, where's the logic in that? So therefore, I left. Like I said, I've never left an accommodation 200 different accommodations plus never left before um, in that manner but I just had to because to give anything more to those people would have been wrong guys a word of warning please um, yeah Zikomo it's not safe and the people they didn't treat me fairly I don't think they would treat everyone that way but it's definitely not safe there's hunting around the roads are really bad and they do not allow you to use their road because you're a camper if you stay at the lodge then you can do whatever they want because then you're paying them lots of money.
morning! Today we are out and about in the actual South Luanga Park. Yesterday was so fast, I found my own left line next to the road. That was so cool. I really just enjoyed that moment so much. It actually brought me to tears and I said to that leopard that you're going to be the best leopard that Luanga has ever seen because it just left me with such a beautiful spirit. Uh, and I was actually saying, you know, it's so challenging. I put so much effort into trying to find these animals and then I, I just sometimes wish that an animal would be there lying on the road or near the road. I could stop, take some video photos and then move. They, they just appear, you know, they just show themselves. So when I first discovered South Luanga, this is what I um, I saw. This is what I imagined this place to look like when I, when I was going to come here. And it has not disappointed. This is absolutely incredible. I'm just checking this tree because I'm waiting for the moment that I find something beautiful lying in a beautiful big tree. That would be a very pleasant moment, beautiful moment. So, uh, it really hasn't disappointed. So, so gorgeous. Uh, almost unexplainable and how I'm going to see a leopard a thousand ways <laughs> um, and I wish it was that easy you know I think sometimes very energetic to get different shots, different angles, uh, different sounds, different speeds. You've got to get slow shots and fast shots and it's just a lot and that's something I struggle with and that's something that I hope that over time with the process of continuously creating I get different shots for you guys and different angles and I would love Cool. especially being above them and watching them swim around and enjoy themselves it was amazing they were just like children in a in a swimming pool that is going to be such an awesome instagram reel um i've got a really good caption for that one because i've been struggling lately with captions talk about creativity and so on i've been struggling lately with my instagram captions and it's been letting me down so uh yeah i've seen some beautiful birds beautiful lagoons look at Last night, I had a dream of us coming together. Last night, oh, Jay is chasing in my it. dream, I saw unity. I had, I had Run, a taste bro. of democracy, and I felt. Felt safe. This 
to the west and south to the north. People were living in peace. Seeing the eyes of justice everywhere. Every land was thriving with love and prosperity. And I woke up asking myself, oh, I woke up asking myself, why can't we achieve a sustainable peace? Why can't we have a sustainable future? Why can't we achieve a sustainable peace? Why can't we have a sustainable future? Why can't we? Last night, I dreamed of an end to poverty. All nations were growing, all nations stood strong. Smiles of understanding between one another. Politics and music. Again, yeah. right, spread amongst all shapes and colors. People were building a beautiful and a stable home. Last night, in my dream, I saw humanity.
Ok, c'est de la couille. Busy sitting here in the sand waiting for the lodge to bring a rope. And there's a male lion roaring down that way. The game drive vehicle actually went to go find it. And he is moving this way, but he's still far. And that way is uh, the two female lions with the two cubs. So we have lions that side, and we have lions that side. And uh, we're sitting here in the dark with a spade and the car light to keep us safe. There's the lion. Let's see lion. Guys that come. <laughs> Yo, yeah, the big ma Makulu one. <laughs> the one is calling, and the other one, he's calling. Yeah. They're coming, I'm telling you. <laughs> I can hear them coming closer. There, there comes safety. <laughs> Is your winch working? Uh, yeah, but I don't have the remote. You don't have the remote? I don't have the remote, because it's an electric one. Efficient. Yeah, you can do that. Perfect. Ladies and gents, I have no energy left. This is the best I have for you. Thank you for watching. And um, I hope you enjoy this next episode. Because the last episode I left you on a cliffhanger. This one's going to be a lot better. That is better. I like that. Here we go. It has been a relatively quiet and uneventful morning. It really does seem like the animals have the freedom to do whatever they want here, whenever they want. There's so much good space. There's so much food. There's so much water. It's a beautiful park. I really, really, really am enjoying this park. It is so beautiful. And I uh, would love to come back here in the future and spend a week you would see crazy things. I think you would easily see five leopard and five lion sightings in a week. No problem. Um, 
it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Uh, yesterday was a crazy day. Managed to settle my bill with Sikomo because I left without paying. Uh, we went to the police and discussed with the police. I recorded the whole thing. I even took videos of the money being exchanged because, you know, I did threaten to bring a lawyer into it. I'm not sure if that's what I'm going to do because, to be honest with you, it's a waste of money to bring a lawyer into it. But there's no other way of protecting myself in the situation because it just gets... You know, it gets very one-sided when you're in a different country, you're by yourself. You've got to be very smart about what mind games you play. And, you know, nothing that I do in my life and in my business and in everything as a holistic Curtius Roberts, the experience is malicious or with bad intent or negative. I'm always trying to get the best out of life and i'm always trying to build people up i'm trying to build myself up i'm trying to see the goodness in the world you know the world is a really hard place and life is a really hard thing um so you know and i i really put myself through challenging things every day like a lot of challenging things and i feel like i'm still a reasonable person and a good person after all the hard things that I go through. But the experience with Izukomo was just shocking. Um, you know, David and Victoria were really shocking. Um, I, uh, I am saddened by the way they treated the situation. You know, showing up to a, an establishment, a lodge, and having the campsite overbooked their mistake after they'd been told it was it was full and that there was a problem they instead of you know trying to make up for this mistake and as a, a gesture of goodwill say you know here's a room it's a guard room but here have this room for tonight i hope you're happy and tomorrow you know you can move to the campsite and please forgive us forgive us for the mistake instead i had to fight for the room and I had to say I'd pay. So I ended up, you know, they ended up making more money off of me. They made $75, $80 off of me for their mistake. Like the principle in that you make a mistake and now someone must pay you for the mistake you've made. That is pretty crazy. It doesn't matter if I agreed to it. Or I didn't agree to it because I said, okay, um, you know, I didn't want to argue and I didn't want to say yes. And I, you know, so no and yes, no and yes is kind of the two ways to go. So I gave a bland middle answer. Okay. Because I didn't want to argue. I just wanted the room. I wanted to go to bed. Um, I wanted a place to sleep. And uh, yeah, you know, I've learned a lot from this. I think this is the, the biggest thing about my travels. It's actually saying to myself a few moments ago that it's so crazy how humans can travel and experience places and use that experience to share with the world so that we can live better lives and form lives it seems like the the currency of the world is actually becoming the knowledge of the way life is in the current moment because the world is so adaptive and it's always evolving so the more up to date you are with the way it is currently experiencing or happening is so valuable it's so it's invaluable like because not a lot of people have that perspective so that perspective is priceless it's interesting and this is where i feel like i undervalue myself and i feel like i challenge i i i'm challenged in the sense that i don't get the reciprocation, the monetary reciprocation, you know, everything I do is self-funded and I have sponsors, which are all loans and have to be paid back, which is a lot of pressure, but not worried about it now, because what can I do? I need to live the experience and live my life so that I can extract what I need out of it to turn it into create something out of it to give back, to create that income, you know? This is it. This is me doing that. Um, I'm sharing my experiences, my advice, my learnings. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy because, you know, in this modern day, I think 
we really are on the precipice of deciding what's valuable, what's important. And I think it's going to come down to certain individuals to start saying, you know, like, this is important. Let's start focusing on it because, yeah, I see a lot of beauty in the traveling that I do, but I see a lot of negativity and that's also very hard. Um, Dan Kafui, this is my last day in South Luanga. I'm really proud of myself for what I've done and how I've dealt with things and the things that I've experienced. You know, Moya, this car, she's looked after me so much and I love her to bits. And I just hope, I pray that she gets me back and we can get her checked out in Lusaka. There's some noises. The other thing is like, Sometimes I think to myself, how how do I do this? How do I get through this? How do I survive? I guess this is how my South Luanga, Zambia nature experience is going to end. From the moment I found those lions yesterday, this place has not wanted me to leave. Got stuck in the sand. My car, by mistake, I pressed the sub tank and I thought something was wrong with the engine and it switched off just before the uh, entrance, which was at half past eight. Two ladies stopped and helped me. They even called the owner. Luckily, it was just the fuel that I ran out of fuel. And now I have about 10 or 15 elephants just walking down the road, coming to eat some grass and drink some water. It's absolutely incredible. How is this for a goodbye? Mm. Hey big boy, it's okay, I can't go back, <laughs> unfortunately.